should have one right now. I'm just saying, like, do we have an implementation plan currently to say this is the way we're moving forward? Right. Do it, does that exist? But you know, every town has different needs. So I mean, I think it's hard to compare with one town because their their needs could be completely different than ours. So. So then why? So that, that's why I'm saying, though, if it's a study, a, a company, that, a consultant that does this for a living and they do it all over the place, they're not, I don't know. I mean, okay. I, I dug out something from 2022, and it was funding requirement cost for one year. And it's all a, approximate final cost for one year. I mean, nothing is, there's all question marks, and it's, I mean, I, I, I just have to agree with you, Aaron. I, I just, I've been only here a year. You've been doing this now for two years, and you don't feel that you've gotten any much further than when you first started, so. Well, 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 well let's be honest here. Chief Lutz, two years in a row at budget time, has provided his implementation plan, and it was bogged down because there were questions that continued to surface after these after his presentations. We had met, uh, I believe it was sometime in January or February, and we said, hey, can, let's get all the questions to Chief Lutz before we have our joint meeting. Not one question was provided. There weren't any questions that really were put together for Chief Lutz ahead of that meeting, but then there were additional questions that kept on servicing. Yeah, but I, I did ask questions to, yeah. to, to Chief yeah. Lutz. I asked it was, nine questions, got no so, but ahead, did we provide questions ahead of time for Chief Lutz? Yes, yes. when we, we went did. into that meeting he, meeting, he had a Word document, and he's, like, he started off the meeting by saying, should I just go one question at a time? You're right. I stand corrected. You're right. I do recall that document. Yeah, yeah. But, so we didn't, we didn't make it through that document, or we had to revisit? I think it was, we didn't go through one through one. It just kind of like the conversation kind of directed okay. to hit on the question. You were correct. Well, right. if, well I, I just, Mr. Chairman, again, I know one of the questions that I asked very, very early on was how many EMTs, certified EMTs, are there in the state? And they said approximately 225,000. And that is a part that's shared by, well, there's 50, 351 communities. So my question was how what guarantee is there that you would be able to recruit any certified uh, EMT? And then, I guess the second question would be, uh, do you think there's any people that are presently on your staff that would be interested? And I know one of the firefighters that was sitting a captain said, well, I'm not interested at all because I have small children. So where do we go if we implement this and then, as I guess to your question, Aaron, is the, the staffing then. And that question came up, well, if you can't get the EMTs, because it certainly sounds like it's a hard thing to get, that, you know, bringing someone in that are all, already certified as EMT, uh, excuse me, uh, paramedics, and there isn't really any desire from the people that are presently on the fire department, I think Chief Luke says, well, then I just hired three additional firefighters. As, as I remember it, I think that was the response. Mm -hmm. So I think, so part of it, I, I think the question mark became, was, came down to compensation because until existing firefighters knew what the compensation was going to be for that position, Chief Lutz wasn't able to really get an idea of how much interest there really was. And, you know, it's no different than what they're facing right now where they're gonna lose their fourth firefighter that they just hired, who's going to another <coughs> municipality that pays more than Clinton does. So <coughs> until Clinton's compensation structure is, is competitive, it, we're seeing that even on the firefighter side. Even, I, I, don't, I don't think we've touched at all on per diem about uh, hiring outside of the fire department. I don't think we've seen any of that. As far as implementation, I, 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 implement, I've got it. From, from the chief there, a, a list of procedures to go from uh, Clinton, uh, from BLS to ALS. I, I've never seen an implementation plan, but this is a kind of a list of what uh, what he's saying. We each step we would have to go through. So uh, I, I don't think, know if that's what he meant. 
So that that like one page, that, that's what I just would like. There's to like know. nine nine different you know items. That, you know, uh, you know, who, who you who you touch with in the uh, Clinton Hospital and uh, you know, stuff you know stuff like that. And, you know, what buying the medicines and stuff like that. So it's, you know, it's just a uh, it's just a list of procedures. And I think Ed, to your point, this has all been. I in my opinion, in the last two years, it's been a lot of piecemeal, like mm -hmm. trying to piece together this, trying to piece together this, and then somebody asked this, and now we're pulling in that, and whatever. I've pulled together materials on like what this program could look like. I know nothing about like implementing ALS, and I think the chief has a ton of expertise in that field, right. but I think for something that could add Four hundred thousand dollars to our budget in year one, a potential four hundred thousand dollars in year two. It would. I don't think it's a bad use of ten thousand to get some sort of like robust implementation plan with different options. Yeah, I'm. I'm still. I don't disagree, but I'm still trying to figure out though if we do or do not have an implementation plan existing. Like if there is one that the chief made and shared with people. So, I mean, I would just, I'd, I'd like to, if we get together again before the next time we get together, have that implementation plan shared so that everyone can read it. Because it's, it's kind of odd being however many months, years into this thing. And like, when we ask a simple question, like, does an implementation plan exist? And like, some people say, oh no, some people say yes, some people say no. I mean, that's, it's kind of weird. Yeah, I mean, it, Chief Lutz has provided the process for implementing ALS, but as far as, you know, questions on um, if you can't, if there are not four firefighters within the, the current department, would you have to go outside? What's that going to, you know, where are you going to house them? Like that kind of, it seemed each one kind of went down this rabbit hole of like the what ifs, right? So right. he did tell us. You apply for, you know, you applied it to um, Dr. Broach. Once he signs off, then here's the process for the minutes. Here's the process, you know, he, he's given that A through Z, but the side questions of like, well, what if this happens? Those are the things that kind of seem to right. keep surfacing. So, yeah, there, 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 there is risk no matter what. And, okay. and even Chief Legere had said that from when he came to present for Bolton on how Bolton did it. Um, during the pandemic, you know, he said, right. yeah, like there's no matter what, there's unknowns and there's, there's going to be. So risk. maybe, um, maybe coming out of this meeting, can we at least agree that either we're either going to do one of two things. One is we're either going to look at some surrounding comparable towns and see how they implemented it and emulate their process or like to, uh, select person, Mary Rose's point, maybe we forego that and we just say we want to do the study um, we want to do the cons we want to hire the consultant um, regardless of whatever any other towns are doing I mean I don't want to let a ten thousand to, to, to the finance committee point I don't want to let a ten thousand dollar study assuming I, I'm, I'm I'm hoping the study doesn't take like eight months to finish I'm hoping it's something that can get done in a matter of a couple months but I, I don't want like a little study like that to hold up an important initiative like this so if that's really the only if that's the only like obstacle, then I, I don't really, I don't have a problem hiring a consultant to, to, to look into it. Mr. Chen. Sure. Yeah, I mean, I, hiring a consultant is going to give the answers, I think, most, or at least give direction. And you can't do anything anyways, you, from a financial standpoint, to be able to initiate this into the department. You have to go back to town meeting to get, appropriate the money for it. So it's not gonna delay anything, so it's just giving everybody more information. Well, I think we're, we've been discussing doing a special town meeting to, to budget it if we come to an agreement. Yeah, that's what I just said. So, well, I, mean, I know, but I'm, I'm saying like we don't, there would be a delay because if we can have consensus early, we can have the special town meeting early. So it's not like we have to wait until next, uh, the next regularly scheduled annual town meeting. So who, who, when you say like, can we talk to other towns, who's gonna do that? I, 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 and I'll have to check the tape. I, I thought, I could have sworn at the last meeting we were talking about doing this research, we agreed that the, human, our, the head of human resources was gonna contact some other towns and, and try to ask them about their 
Yeah. So that was when we were doing the contract. We were just getting rates of EMTs and paramedics. Okay. So we didn't do that in the contract. Okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I anyone can do it. I mean, I don't think that necessarily has to be done by a consultant. I mean, is, is this like something we could have? Like, is this something that we could either have Michael do or Angela do, or like just a preliminary reach out, like? Is that not okay? I, I just don't, I, I just don't know why we're not doing the consultant. That's that's all. I, I think we're looking for other ways, put other responsibilities on other people. What, uh, what's, mean, uh, well, uh, I don't know. I mean, does the if, finance if, if there's an implement, us, I'm sorry. No, no, I was saying, if there is an implementation plan that everyone speaks of, like, can we circulate it? If that's what we're looking for. Well, so, so, number one, you what Michael has put together, or at, at, Thus far, like what he's put together, are you saying? The so, chief? The chief, yeah. Obviously. Yeah, yeah. So what he has and then... Like if, because I know there are a lot of like what ifs, like yeah. what if these people aren't interested? What if, you know, like have we explored per diem? Have we, like do we have all these options? Like to me that should be outlined in a plan. And I apologize if I have received it and I do not have it currently, but if that's what we're looking it. for... And it exists, then what do we do? Well, well, Aaron had put you put together slides, right? That had yeah, a rough that are his like recommendation of how he would implement it. Yeah. Um, but yes, to everybody's points here, I don't think that that has enough detail. So, the, so his just general, but I don't, I don't see the harm if, if, if. Michael or Angela is able to reach out to a, a surrounding community and just say, do you, you know, do you happen to have an implementation plan that you had used? Would you be willing to share it just to get an idea of what's out there? I mean, or Mr. Chair, or even just a conversation. If they don't have anything written, they can just like get a, put us I, in touch with the right person and just and just like talk to them and get some questions and answers. And I just. I'm not against doing this study, I would just be curious if we are talking to these other towns, I would also ask that question. When you implemented ALS, did you hire an outside consultant to help with the implementation process? If we talk to three or five towns and all of them did it, then it's a no-brainer, let's do it. But if we talk to three or five towns and none of them did it, then maybe we should reconsider whether it's even necessary. But that's all well, that's I think if we're going to do that, I think we should do towns that are at the same, same population size. as yeah. us, sure. the same yeah. size as, as forces. Some, you know, not not a Bolton or uh, well, well, Bolton, Berlin. But Bolton doesn't didn't have a they didn't have a full time staff, right? No, but so, I'm just saying. I think if you're gonna if you really staff. want a true picture of what it would be, comparing it to our community, you need to go and do this yeah. review with communities that are about the same size of a force and population and mm -hmm. things of that nature. You get right. I just got, I'm sorry. Clinton will use round numbers, 15,000 people and the least square miles of any of the area towns. Between the other six towns, you've got about 45 to 55,000 people. And they're all closer to hospitals than we are. Mm -hmm. It all has to be taken into that configuration. We're talking a few months back about where we're going to house the uh, the EMTs or the ALS people. You got a Clinton Hospital emergency room. The second floor, I believe, is empty over the emergency room. And we're talking here for maybe an hour and a half on how many houses we're going to need to, to put these people up. Your firefighters work two 24 hour shifts a week. There's a lot of room there for them to be per diems in the other five days of the week there. there, you can. There's a lot of things you can do that should be done by a consultant, not just my thoughts or errands or errands. You could do that and come up with some answers, good answers. Or how many times do we need an ALS person? How, compare that to how many fires we go to, you know, call for. Uh, most of our stuff, if you're on Church Street during any given day, the biggest uh, fire call is two, two fire trucks at the Corcoran House. And I'm sure that's going in other directions also. But up there, I bet you there's 
two to four a day some days. So we need all that stuff to go. And that's why you want a consultant. Let him get the official, how many ambulance calls did you make? How many fire calls did you make? How many inspections did you make? And see where your people are. And that's what we're not doing. See, so let me say why I uh, agreed with the rest of the Finance Committee meeting that we should get a, a, a consultant on board. Everything you say is true. Do I think the town internally could um, check with other towns, uh, discover the various options, analyze the various options, and develop a comprehensive, comprehensive plan uh, to implement an ALS system? Yes, I do. For three years, it hasn't been done. The best we have come up with is we're going to just fold them into the firefighting group, which I think is a horrible idea. And every question that we asked at that meeting with the, the chief and the president of the union, the vast majority of questions we asked were, well, that would be decided by the union contract. Well, the union contract is not the governing document of the town of Clinton. These two birds thought it was, and I think they do, they think it is. But three years we've been waiting for it to be done. It has not been done. I mean, in all fairness. So we it, could say, oh, the town could do it. Now, let me say, I think the town should be able to do it, but thus far it has, the town has demonstrated that it is not able to do it. I, I, I can't say I, I agree or disagree because I just I haven't read whatever there, there definitely is a disconnect between the, the fire department seems to believe that they have created an implementation plan and the finance committee I, if I'm understanding it correctly it thinks it just is completely inadequate which may be the case I don't know so if that's if that's the case though I would still want to get eyes on the original implementation plan to like try to see where there are missing you know sections of it that that need to be um, that need additional information so I, I just I it's just weird because that's it's to say that like nothing's been done I, I, I don't know if I'm not saying that that's wrong but I'm, I'm not saying that it's right either because I don't I you know I don't know Matt you were involved maybe, in, maybe you were it's not nothing's been done it's it's we're stuck we cannot yeah. move forward there, we've had many discussions about this. We've had many meetings. We've been talking about it for years, well before I joined the board. Like, we have to put a plan forward. And if this consultant can help us, like, to Bob's point, like, analyze the situation, come up with some ideas, yes, the plan in which the chief has is fine. Move forward with it. Or there, here are some concerns that we have. But, like, we are stuck. We need to do something different than what we're doing now, which is why I'm for the mm. Or we can just keep talking about it for another year. I think before, uh, you know, the, the reason why I would suggest looking out to a couple of the towns on implementation plans is I'm not, I don't know that I'm ready to spend $25,000 on on a study, and I'm just basing that upon the feasibility study. The cost of the feasibility study was around twenty to twenty-five thousand dollars. That was done in two thousand twenty. Feasibility study for what? When when the town of Clinton paid for a study to imp when they paid for a study for the feasibility of ALS or the need of ALS in Clinton, that study was about twenty to twenty-five grand, from what I remember, because there's there was some money left over. So before we went and spent. Another twenty to twenty-five grand. That's why I figured if there, you know, to the point that was made earlier, if there's an implementation program that uh, do, we, do we have that feasibility study? Yep. Yeah. yeah, that was like it was like it's a, a thirty-five-page PDF. It, oh, I remember it. Yeah, yeah. Matrix, matrix. But I think yeah, at the at the end, it just said yeah, you need, you need it. You need right, it. exactly. Yeah. Correct. Mm -hmm. So, I remember that. Yeah. Right. So, so I'm just. I think that that study was approximately twenty to twenty-five thousand dollars, from what I remember looking at at that Warren article. So, I'm. My suggestion was if we looked out to see if another town has an implementation program that they went through before we spend 
another twenty to twenty-five thousand dollars potentially on a on another study. Um, I understand the feasibility study is not an implementation plan. I, I'm not suggesting that it is. I'm just thinking from a comparable cost. Yeah, but you'd be going out. You'd be putting together uh, a document for for bids anyway. So you really can't. You don't know if it's going to be that much. Yeah. It, it could be a lot less. It could be like Aaron said. It could be ten thousand. You've got three years of right. people doing those studies right. since the last one. So you'll have some better idea. Or like that was what matrix I think that they yeah. did. I would you just say them, like I bet you if they came back with one and you asked them for the exact same um, verbiage, you'd get that plus, and that's you've got three years of more information in all these places that are doing it. I would just suggest putting a time frame on it. Yeah. Like yeah. if we're going to go out and get all this research, I don't know who's going to do this, but like get all this research and like let's make a deadline like the end of August, and if we're not, haven't come to some type of conclusion, then move forward on a consultant. I, I don't disagree with you. I mean, it, if it comes back that town, <coughs> they, don't have they don't have a it, document on yeah. how they implemented it, then, you know, then that kind of answers that question, and then the study would be, you know, then that becomes the direction. And I don't, I don't have a. If we want to do, if we want to hire a consultant to help with the implementation, I, I don't really have a problem with that. But I would still, I would still be curious to do uh, Mike's the item number one, the review of the ALS strategies pursued in surrounding comparable towns. I think we can, I think we can do both. We can just say no matter what, like Clinton personally wants to do this, uh, this hire a consultant to help with the implementation. But I just. <coughs> I just would be curious if, if that is in fact the normal way that like other towns are going about doing the implementation. Um, just for I, my own curiosity, just to find out <coughs> where are, are we. Just is this hiring consulting? Is that a consultant? Is that something that is very normal, very run of the mill, or are we asking something that's a little bit out of the norm? And I don't care. We can still do it even if it is out of the norm. But I just would like to, to have that that question answered. I will tell you what, I think that part of the, the, the study would, is sort of fluffy and very easy to do. Could be done in one day. What I would be interested in as a member of the Finance Committee, given that this is potentially going to cost millions of dollars when they get done with the, with the overtime that this is going to generate. <coughs> um, I am interested in what are the options? And what are the costs of the various options? <clears throat> one, one interesting question that I have, though, is this, because it seems like the approach of this is just putting this directly on, like, the fire department to really push this forward. And I'm starting to, like, wonder, I was having a thought, like, this, I don't disagree with a lot of this, these questions and stuff, but I feel like maybe this should be more of a collaborative initiative where instead of all we're doing is just telling the fire department to answer X, Y, and Z, do this, do that, prove to me that this is gonna work, where wouldn't it be like better to, if we agree, if we think that ALS makes sense, like maybe like we all kind of like work on it and not just keep asking for information from one source over and over again. Maybe there's other town resources that should be devoted to like, you know, that's kind of like why if we, the consultant study, maybe maybe that's the answer to that. We like, maybe that's the help that that's needed. But I, I, I'm just, it's, it feels like this, this should really be kind of like a town wide discussion and effort. And I feel like so far it's just been, you know, kind of like us just sitting back going like thumbs up or thumbs down when the, the fire chief, when the fire department comes here and gives us a pitch on like, that they want to do ALS. It just doesn't feel like it's a real kind of like a group effort here. Totally agree. And I feel like that's to the point of like the chief and his staff probably has great knowledge about the field, but when it comes to numbers and input, like I don't expect him to be able to project like if you need to hire this many <coughs> people, then this, like I don't expect him to do all of that work. So that's what would be helpful to get somebody else on it. I mean, I don't want to say I don't want to give any more of my time, but I personally don't have a ton of time to give to like an additional 
well, initiative of this magnitude? Well, I mean, Mr. Chairman, I, I would love to just t make a motion and just say, let's just do the consultant. Obviously, the Finance Committee is eager to have that done. Uh, I know as a board member, I would be very happy to see it because it would hopefully answer a lot of the outstanding questions that are there and then we could move on. But I guess I would make it in the form of a motion. Did you make a motion? Yes, oh, I made a motion I'll to second call it. And so. Second, any discussion? Um, so was the, I would, can we get some detail? I just might want to amend the motion to get some details of like how, because if, if they come back and this implementation study is going to take 12 months, like I, I don't know if I'm going to be on board for that. But if it's if it's if it's something where the services can be, if, if this this assistance can get us answers in under six months, I'd be more willing to do it. But I, I don't want to. Yeah, I don't, I don't really know that and until you, you put well, yeah, an RFP and you, you <laughs> get an I know answer that. to it. So, I but mean, it's to set the, it in motion. And yeah, yeah. No, I don't disagree. Here, so. I, I would don't. ask Michael, uh, in a bidding contract of this type, you can put a time limit on, on it, can't you? You can say, and we want this done in 30 in days months. or 60 days. Or 60 okay. days. Because yeah. right. I'll tell you the truth. I think I could do it myself. I mean, I'm not going to. But I think I Where was, were you the last week? <laughs> well, I was waiting oh, for 10,000 subcommittees that have worked on it to come up with a cogent written plan. And they have not done that. There's That's been, where I have been. Well, there's been one subcommittee. And well, okay, Mr. Okay. Chairman. So there's been a motion made and seconded. Um, yeah, I mean, I for a time frame, I, if if I would be up for it, if we could do sixty day, like if a sixty day turnaround or ninety days at tops, but I wouldn't want to see. Yeah, how about can I? What if I amend the motion to say that it's going to be a, a a term limit on it of three months? Would that be would you guys be okay with that? Six months. No, no, I wouldn't do six. I would say three. You figure by the end of September, it should be I done by. Three months isn't. Well, no, you find you gotta, you gotta put, you gotta put the, the proposal together anyways, and then you have to advertise and right. everything. So, I, I so the three months doesn't that, start. I mean, you can't really say September, Matt, because, because you don't know how long it's going to take. No, but it, so right now we're at the beginning of June. So that if if it would then call, it would re require. The process to be expedited on our side so we can go up to bid or for an RFP and then hope the ideal in the ideal universe it would you know if you're going well I mean you, know, you just you know put it out and say that you know you would like to have this completed within 90 days yeah. I mean that's right that's all I mean yeah. so if you is that your amendment to the yeah that, that's my amendment to the motion looking for a second yeah, so I mean if we can go all so July first, yeah. So there's there's an amendment. There's a motion to make to amend it to a ninety day time period for the study. Once we have a once you award the once bid. we award it, correct. I'll second it. All right. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 An amendment. Uh, any further discussion on the initial motion? Yeah. None. All in favor? Aye. 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 So would you all, so now, will you all, so what Mike pulled together was a draft of what he would recommend go into the document that goes out. So a big document, yeah. I thought that's why we were here today. Okay. So he, he sent out the draft. I don't know if we want to discuss it in the next 13 minutes or. <laughs> that's what I was going off of. That was, oh, oh. yeah, because the number one was the, mm -hmm. that's why I was asking the question or, or and uh, agreeing with it about the review of ALS strategies pursued in surrounding comparable towns. That, that, that was going off that list. So then why not set a, um, you know, so the normal select board meeting cycle would be the second, uh, maybe, I don't know, when, 
when they would meet after. Right, the next June next meeting would be June 21st. So then so maybe by, by that meeting, we can have a draft RFP for the board to review. Mm -hmm. But I would like to have any input on questions or topics that you want to discuss. I mean, I can put some together, uh, but I don't want to be the only one making a decision. If, if there's, you know, Mr. Dukonski has a list in, in his document, but if there are other people have specific right. areas that they want to touch on, it would be nice to know that. Yeah, so I would think that, <coughs> obviously, you know, with the election coming up Monday, I would think that, like, bigger picture, you would have the fire department, FinCom, select board, be able to have input on that RFP for the 21st, and then that goes out because if the fire department has anything they want to see in there, or, or Chief Lutz, rather, or whoever the select board members are. Because we have the RFP document that did the feasibility study. So we just work off of that and change the scope of work and, and, and put that out. But we want to make sure the scope of work is inclusive of what people are looking for. You know? mm -hmm. So I don't want to assume and come up with a couple of bullet points and then if people are saying, well, you didn't touch any of the concerns we had. Okay, so if we want to have another meeting of select board, perhaps new select board, if, if there's a new member, fire and finance committee on the 21st, can we circulate like a draft? Can you can you create a draft with what Mike has in this email? Circulate it and tell everyone to come ready to that meeting to finalize it. That sound good? Yes, it does. Yes. I know I'm not in charge, but yeah, that's good. No, it sounds good. Okay. Sounds good. Sounds good. Can All right. Also float this through human resources too, just to be sure there aren't any like again things we may have not, you know, we're kind of saying this has kind of been hodgepodge, like we just, once everyone has everything, maybe she can take a look at it and just do anything that she wants to include too in terms of staffing, you know, you know sure. just get her expertise to take a look yeah. in case we overlook something that we are aware of. Yep, absolutely. All right. I think that does it. I'm yeah. sorry to be late. For some reason, I had it in my head that it was 6:30, and I never even looked at my phone. If, if well, Sean said you, and, you and me both. I just <laughs> want to know. All right. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, moving on to public comment. Anybody here for public comment? Uh, is there anybody here for the license hearing of Subway? Last one there. We'll move, move out of order. Getting all those things we'll, we'll, through we'll, on our front. Oh, there we go. Oh, for the town budget. Oh. Yeah. All right. Uh, next up, we have a hearing for 1175 okay. Main Street. Um, Shri Gianskrupa. Is that it? Yes. Yeah, right, right. Incorporated uh, DBA Subway Restaurant. Uh, welcome. So being that this is a hearing, we'll open up the hearing. Uh, you can introduce yourself. Good evening. And my name is Amin Patel. And I'm uh, taking over Subway. And I'll do my best to serve the community. Thank you. Perfect. All right, so the hearing is... Uh, Okay. No, no Sean. What? No Sean to guide you. What? <laughs> <laughs> no, this is going to be pretty easy. This should be an easy one. So, um, is there anyone here to speak in favor of the license? There being none, is there anyone uh, Well, here? I would. I, I've known Andy for years, and, he, and he's always been a, a gentleman and ran a good business down on Sterling Street. So. I would certainly be in favor of his request. So I was always under the impression there was a hearing. So you had the, the for, the against, and then the board. Is that not I don't know. the process? Of well, I thought you asked for anybody for against and for. Oh, I didn't know if there was anybody in, usually in the crowd. Sounds good. So, all right. So we have an endorsement. <laughs> and, um, I mean, I love Subway. Anyone to speak against? Anyone to speak against? There being none, that will close that portion of the hearing. Any questions from the board? There being none, uh, the 
it's the pleasure of the board. Uh, Mr. Chair, I will make a motion that we approve the application for a common victualler license from Shri um, Gian Scrupa, Incorporated, doing business as Subway to operate a restaurant business at 1175 Main Street in Clinton. Thank you. Second. Second. Uh, any further discussion? Um, there being none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. So then, good luck. The next step would be. Yeah. So is this the same? Is, is that the same location where it is now? Okay. Oh, great. Just a new Okay. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you. All right. Well, good luck. See you there. <laughs> good luck. Uh, next item on the agenda: Class Two Vehicle Dealer New License Hearing, One Eight Seven A Stone Street, Stone Street Auto and Truck Repair Incorporated. Please come to the table and introduce yourself. This is, this, is this is a hearing, so. I am James Tumulo, the third. Uh, and I'm looking for approval for my repair license and uh, approval for a dealer license, depending if we have to go to the planning board or not. After. So. Okay. Very good. Is there anyone here to. Are there two hearings? Here. Yeah, so, what? So, so the first hearing is going to be for the to operate as a, a commercial automotive repair. That is correct. So that's number one. So, um, is there anyone here to speak in favor of that? Anyone here to speak against? There being none, we'll close that. Any? Questions from the board? There be none. No, it's a pleasure of the board. Uh, Mr. Chair, I make a motion that the select board approve the application from Stone Street Auto and Truck Repair to operate a commercial automotive repair garage at 187A Stone Street in Clinton. Second. Second. Any <coughs> questions? There be none. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, so then we'll move on to the next item, which is going to be for a Class 2 vehicle dealer new license for uh, 187A Stone Street, Stone Street Auto and Truck Repair. And this is going to be for a uh, dealer license. So if you want to just tell us a little more. Basically, there's 15 paved parking spots there. Uh, the planning board approved it as a repair shop. They knew that when they looked at the initial uh, filing and approval. Uh, I, I believe we're going to have to go to the planning board to get their blessing, but we'd like you to approve up the 10 cars for us so that when we go to the planning board, it's all done. If we have to, I, you know. Yeah, yeah Mr. Chair, the planning board would then do site plan review to see how that would be laid out on the property and where the cars would be stored and make sure there's enough safety uh, room for them. So you're looking for 10 cars? 10 cars now. All right. All right, anyone here to speak for? Uh, anyone here to speak against? Okay, none. Any questions from the board? Any further questions? Um, all right, it's a pleasure of the board. Mr. Chairman, I'll move to uh, allowing the um, um, vehicle dealer license at 187A Stone Street and B for 10 cars. Yeah. 10 cars. House. Second. Second. Any discussion? All right, there being none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Well, Thank well, you. If you need your cars fixed, go down and see James. <laughs> <laughs> okay. See you, you guys later. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good luck. Thank you. Next up, uh, Taha Sabri's seasonal use of sidewalk for his Zaytun restaurant on High Street. Come to the table, please. How's it going? Um, excellent. How are you? If you could just introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Taha Sabri. Um, and my parents own uh, Zaytun restaurant right down the street, and we were looking to expand it a little bit. Um, just the complete uh, cleaning community has been great, and we're open to expand a little bit. Um, I'm hoping to do Italian ice, uh, refreshers, ice cream, and we're going to be doing it inside on like rainy days and colder days, but on the days that it's nice out and you know there's people, 
walking outside. High Street's been growing a lot. There's a lot of people walking, so we thought it would be a good opportunity to put a little stand out there. Excellent. So what would be the process for that, Mr. Ward? Yeah, I think it would just require uh, approval by the select board for use of this public way, public sidewalk. Uh, we did go down yesterday and, and with the building inspector and, uh, and uh, looked at the area uh, and the size of the coolers, uh, they're going to be right in front of the store. Uh, so the size of the coolers won't impede any of the handicap or pedestrian act, uh, walking access on the sidewalk. So they were all in favor. Uh, and again, they're going to be mobile, that they can go in and out, and it's going to be seasonal. So it's really only for the summer. If the, we do have a sidewalk uh, permit process, if it's going to be permanent, uh, like for outdoor dining and serving, uh, this is only going to be a summer seasonal cart that's going to be a mobile cart that can be moved in and out. So it really would require uh, kind of like a mobile vendor re or, uh, okay by the Board of Selectmen. And then after the uh, summer season, if he feels it's something that uh, is be has been beneficial to the business and they want to do permanently, then we can go through that process uh, for a license to do it uh, by right after that. Mr. Chair, so can I just ask, Mike, so what, what's the difference from Zaytoon's perspective between like seasonal versus permanent? Like can he still, like anything that's on the menu inside, can servers bring that out to the tables that are outside under this application? Not, not under, under this, that, that, we're, we're still allowing, um, restaurants were able to do that with the COVID rules. Okay. So uh, we, and, and where the economic development office had you know, provided the, the tables and chairs and umbrellas down there to try to enhance them. Right. So they're able to do that currently, but now that uh, the state and now the federal government has ended all the pandemic regulations, Mr. Duffy is going to be approaching all the businesses to go through that process. So, okay. so we will be looking to clean that up for everyone. So currently, yes, he can do that with the regular restaurant menu, um, but we will then, if that is going to be a regular thing, we will uh, be going through the board to, to try to uh, uh, clean that up because there are others that are down there. You see all the chairs and yeah. the, the, the only, I think the only one that currently, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, I think the only one that formally has approval, I think, is the Clinton Bar and Grill right now. So, so the, if, if the other uh, restaurants want to do that, uh, we're going to be coming to the board for that. So gotcha. we'd be okay with them doing it for the summer gotcha. as we're going through that process. Uh, but otherwise, it would be for this kind of a mobile vendor, um, you know, uh, uh, okay that you're giving right now. Okay. Similar that we've done for uh, in the past for like a hot dog vendor that sure. would be on a corner or, or a sidewalk or a park or whatever that they would need approval to use town uh, property by the board yeah. of selectmen. So. so, just curious. So, is that is the intent just to have the food outside be from like an outside cart, or are you going to allow people to order from the menu inside? So um, I'll, I'm, I'm technically going to be very separate from the restaurant okay. that's already there. So um, I think like last summer uh, we had you know a, a lot of the seats provided by the town and a lot of people did want to you know get takeout, sit outside there, sure. and we kind of want to take advantage of those seats again. But this time I have my own you know small menu, just like a couple flavors of ice cream, a couple flavors of Italian ice, and if they okay. want to sit down, they can. But everything's in to-go cups, so if you want to go on the road, then yeah. Okay, understood. Thank you. Any other questions? All right. It's a pleasure of the board. Uh, Mr. Chair, I make a motion that the Board of Selectmen approve um, permission from Zaytoon Restaurant for seasonal use of the sidewalk in front of their business on High Street to sell ice cream and other, um, what's the word, portable? Or what's seasonal the, items? What, Se other outside, other seasonal. Other food? Food Indeed. options. Yeah. Well, I don't. <laughs> I know, I don't right? Know if it's only ice cream, then etc. Ice cream, etc. Yeah, ice, <laughs> ice cream, etc. For the Eagles. summer months. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Second. Uh, any questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Good luck. Thank awesome. you very Good much. Luck. Thank you very much. Uh, I love Italian ice. This is exciting news. <laughs> Have a great day. You too. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, next item, seasonal use, oh no, that's the wrong one. Police Chief Brian Coyne, Federal Law Enforcement Transfer. The Police Chief is requesting approval to transfer $7,500 from the Federal Law Enforcement Fund to the State Law Enforcement Fund to be used for youth and community outreach programs. What's the pleasure of the board? 
Mr. Chair, I, uh, I move that we approve the request to transfer, transfer $7,500 from the Federal Law Enforcement Fund to the State Law Enforcement Fund to be used for youth and community outreach programs. Second. Any discussion? Just, uh, Mr. Chair, I think the Chief was, he, yeah, I think it was, the letter was pretty comprehensive and it's a small amount. I think he was going to come to explain it, but, uh, but I think the Board can take action, you know, certainly uh, on their own. So he's probably yeah. still on his way back from Boston, <laughs> yeah. if I had a guess. We were playing today. Just made this meeting, meeting 30 minutes shorter. But you know. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully he pulls you over. No. All right, so uh, all, in, uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, the next item, uh, the ARPA funding recommendations. Um, so we had the Clinton Elementary School culvert cap repair. Uh, community and economic development digital signage update and business assistance program and uh, where do we leave off with the um, the culvert repair where we're gonna I think we we're gonna reach out to mr. McGowan and mr. Farragher right and, and I can give the board an update on that item uh, mr. chair did speak with mr. Farragher and mr. McGowan uh, on this I think Mr. Farragher had gotten funding a uh, town meeting to do some repairs to the parking lot. So he was focusing more on the pavement aspects of the lot. He feels that the culvert is more kind of uh, like a public works type project. It's a 15 inch uh, reinforced two layer uh, concrete pad that, that was poured over that culvert to try to uh, uh, take the weight to support, uh, support any weight going over with buses or trucks or whatever. So. So I talked to Mr. McGowan. This was just kind of a number that was generated. The school was interested in maybe if there was funding to do something uh, with the with the culvert because it is kind of all beat up down there. Um, so at four hundred thousand dollars was just kind of a general number that was kind of put at it to, as a placeholder. So uh, Chris McGowan was going out to get some pricing okay. for it. So for tonight, they they feel that. There is a need for it, um, that it certainly has uh, uh, been destructive in that parking lot there, uh, but that uh, they, uh, they didn't have any new information to provide. Okay. So if it's a priority of the board uh, and it's something that they feel is it would be a good project and if it's board priority, they said they would then firm up some numbers and come to a future meeting with that information. But Yeah, yeah I, you know, I think, I, I don't know, um, I can't imagine it's going to be easy for Mr. Farragher to look at repairing that parking lot with the shape, you know, with the uh, condition of the culvert itself. Um, there definitely is a hazard down there with, you know, like we talked about before, there's only so much the DPW can do to, to kind of patch that uh, concrete. And, uh, you know, I'd hate to see someone get hurt hurt from it and then right. I don't know how that's going to win yeah it's 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 just impact. unfortunate how some of the rebar is coming through I mean there's a theory that maybe the the rebar was put a little bit too close to the surface you know that it should be a little deeper uh, because and it's been 20 years but still uh, I was hoping it would probably hold up a little better than that you know no, I want would they I wonder if they would be able to if they repaired the culvert could they Pave over that? Could they pave over it, or would that have to stay? The con the concrete have to stay exposed, or? Yeah, it's a good question. We could look into that. Yeah, you as know. to why they they left it the concrete before. I don't. I don't think it would have been for access because we have manholes to get access to it. So I don't think it, whether it's pavement or concrete, you're going to have to get jackhammer it up anyway. No matter so, what. Uh, so could that help? Uh, seal it a little better. You know, maybe we can. You know, I'll I'll ask uh, Mr. McGowan to look into that. And, and you know, like like I mentioned before, with the um, community development block grant that Mr. Duffy was talking about with Ash Street, if any of that could be uh, could be tied together. Um, Chief Coyne, you're all set. Yeah, we already proved oh, here. Sorry. That's all right. Sorry, you had to come down. No. Well, Hopefully you don't go back and watch it and hear what Mr. Dewall was saying. <laughs> <laughs> so, all good stuff. Come on up. Okay. First of all, I just apologize.
Well, that's three of us. So you're every, everybody. My fault. <laughs> So I think we have two things to discuss. Oh. <laughs> so yeah, so can we just can we just uh, put a put a bow on the uh, the culvert repair? Is there a way that we could maybe look at? I know you talked about the Ash Street, uh, the community development block grant there mm -hmm. that was going to do that over. Um, Mr. Farragher had talked about maybe doing some. He got some funding to do some repairs to the parking lot yep. down there, and then <clears throat> Mr. McGowan's going to look at. Uh, some costs at repairing the cap, but is there a way that maybe those project those projects might be able to come together a little bit? Where sure, um, we haven't discussed it, but the um, Ashby project is is discrete from the other work. You correct. It only affects the culvert, and that would be putting in uh, new drainage on Ashby, and that'll be poured into the culvert, but but down probably underneath the ball fields, you know, where it passes. Um, but certainly, it's going to be coordinated. Yeah, so I was just curious, you know, if they're already down there paving, is you know, is there any way to leverage, you know, I know it would have to be separate jobs, but yeah. if they could, uh, if they're already down there paving, maybe they'd be interested in bidding on another job to, Sure. You know, we can have a discussion if we want to coordinate the bidding on projects. Yeah, instead of having different contractors that are down there in the same parking lot next to each other. Yeah, if that's feasible. I don't like those. With the DHCD money, the, the regulations that surround that may make it so more impractical than, than uh, practical, in, in spite of how practical it sounds. Sounds good. All right, so moving on to the digital signage update. Sure. So you have before you a design for a digital sign. You may recall that the request, I believe, was for $75,000 from ARPA funds to install some um, LED message boards um, at critical junctures in place to... Um, provide a forum for public announcements, public safety messages, all kinds of community announcements. Um, we estimated that might provide for two, maybe three signs. Recheck the pricing that we received last year um, and forecasting from the cost of some of the things we had assembled last year, including the planters and some signage. I'm estimating that will probably cover two. I'm estimating a, a, a project cost of $35,000 to $40,000 a piece, for 30 to 40. A piece. Uh, a piece. Did, you, did anyone happen to speak to the school department? Because I know Yes, okay. I spoke to Mr. Meyer today. Um, and so we're proposing two locations, and one of them would be up at the middle and high school. His original signage thoughts were to put it at the elementary school. He may still do something like that. Um, but uh, the, uh, the, putting one at the high school and the middle school um, would seem to be a good place in that it's um, an area that's highly trafficked by residents of the town. It's one of the gateways into town. There's really only two ways into town from the south two ways in from the north, one way in from the west, and one way in from the east. So if we're trying to intercept people, thinking about how we might, might employ those in locations that were safe and, and conspicuous um, and a kind of good surrounding, um, I, we came down with really two locations proposed under one, under one idea. One idea is that we put two signs of, like, like you see described in this drawing, one in front of the fire station at the intersection of Church and Main. That's the, that's the most heavily trafficked road in town. <coughs> it's a good location for a sign in that it's at a signalized intersection. Uh, it's also a very simple intersection. Um, the other location would be at the uh, middle school and high school. Um, and, the, and the chief variable and cost in that installation would be where is the electricity and how, how, you know, how, easy can, how easily and how inexpensively can we attach a sign near the edge of the road to where the electricity is now. Fire station's a layout, there's, a, mm -hmm. there's a, a traffic box right there. We also looked at other locations, including at the end of Triangle Park. We made a determination, it's our opinion, that's really just too hazardous location. Uh, drivers are very indecisive in that location. I don't think we want to distract them. Uh, another possibility um, the, of sign out of this kind of uh, proportion would be at, near the intersection of High and Water Street. That would, in, that would intercept much of the uh, traffic heading east and west in town. Um, you know, and then further north, there didn't seem to be a really good place. Most of the traffic ends up in town, um, but you know, up by Hannaford's or something like that is a possibility, but that didn't seem all that attractive. Mm -hmm. We also looked at the corridor coming down Boylston Street from the dam down to, you know, and into the downtown to inter intercept people coming from the south. Might be worth looking at, see if, if it makes sense to put one 
just north of the intersection with Green Street and Chestnut Street, you know, you, you know where the uh, that brick baller used to be and the diner used to be. Um, that would that would be um, conspicuous to people approaching from the south uh, on Boylston Street or from the east on Burn Road. Um, that's a possibility as well. And, and now, I, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, I think at the intersection of uh, Cameron and Boylston, right on the corner of Cumbies, that piece of land there, I think, is town property. If I'm I couldn't tell you that the, the uh, <laughs> assessor's website is down this week, so I couldn't see where the parcels are. But... I vaguely remember, you know, seeing that. So, I mean... If it is, that's a possibility as well. Yeah. Um, okay. Again, the, I like it a little up the street a little better because it, it's a little safer. Um, we don't get a lot of accidents at the bottom of uh, Cameron Street there. But that's a super wide intersection, and people are looking at cars and trying to judge their speed as they come on a straightaway downhill. So it might be a little safer to put it a little away, a little farther away. But um, what we're proposing now with the funds we have available, um, if we were to follow this this model of signage, uh, would be one at the high school, and elementary uh, high school and middle school, and one at Church Street. Very good, Mr. Chair. Uh, are these one sided? But these are, the, these would be two sided. Two sided. Okay. I think it's actually kind of, it's kind of a cool design. We went through many simplifications. It would be uh, black painted steel, which would make, you know, make it similar to the other infrastructure in the downtown. Um, that head, that headboard, it looks like actually like a big headboard, um, would be um, a illuminated, it would be a light box, laser cut letters with a, you know, a screen behind them that's kind of a opalescent white or you know, pearlescent white. Um, and so that, that Clinton would always be out there. It's, mm -hmm. it's a message board, but it's also a branding opportunity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and then what I'm proposing, you know, this, I'm not saying we're wed to the words welcomes you, but below the digital and kinetic signage is something that's static, which is, I, I've got it designed as just Clinton green and gold, just saying we welcome you, mm -hmm. you know, with a, a, a panel that extends below. And if we have plantings below, it'll really pop those plantings against a, a, a colored field. And forgive my ignorance, can these be updated from here or do you have to go on site? How, how do you change what the message is? It depends on the uh, app, but okay. most of them are remotely. Okay. Yeah, I mean, yeah. there's a little. Uh, go remotely, no matter what, go remotely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> yeah. And if we wanted to explore multiple um, signboards, um, we would do something far simpler, maybe not one of these LED displays, but something more of an older generation, like say the ones that are at Walgreens or something like that, which would be less expensive, and we could put them in other places. I think that's. I like the idea of what you have here. I think it's it's modern, but it's um, sleek. You know, it's definitely. I like it. It's, it's of a piece. It's it's. It, I mean, the the real attraction is going to be what's on the sign. Yeah. The information, but this is a but this is a a good. I think it's an attractive framework for the information. Is is that LED color display? Is that like a, like a t like television effect, yeah, or are you stuck on like just red lettering, similar to like Parks and Rec has? It could be television like. I mean, we haven't looked into this, but most of them are. I mean, the LEDs can do anything. The diodes can can transmit any data. That said, you want it to be static because your primary reader is hmm. somebody who's driving a car. Um, so you know you don't want to be distracting them, so to speak. But it gives us an opportunity to be. Those if, red and black ones are hard to read too. <laughs> yeah. And listen, if they're not looking at a 38 by 75 color yeah. display, they're looking at their phone anyway. So <laughs> might as well. Uh, Mr. Chair, I just had one question for, for Phil. Is the, does the same company that installs the sign, are they, um, are they the ones that be contacted if we need like maintenance or repair done on the sign? I don't know. Okay. I, 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 I certainly could find that out. Yeah, I, I would imagine it would be, but it'd just be good to know ahead of time in case we ever had a problem with it. Know exactly what the problem. No, in fact, we probably should count on bake, baking that into the pot. Sure. Yeah. Uh, it's a pleasure of the board. Oh, sorry. We. Uh, yeah. Um, sorry. We need to approve. We've already approved funding, for, or we haven't approved. We have not. Uh, we just okay. put them on the. <clears throat> um, do you? We have a number. Sorry. Is it eighty? I don't, why don't, but, but this is, I think we wanted an update tonight. If, if, if this kind of meets with your approval, this idea of two signs that look like this, we can flesh it out and get a bona fide proposal yeah. and bring that back to you. That sounds great. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm bona fide. So. Yeah, I mean, well, similar to what we did to the radios, right, didn't we approve up to with 
flexibility. Sure. Um, Mr. Chair, I move that we approve uh, 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 an estimate of, sorry, that we uh, allocate $80,000 to um, a digital signage program um, contingent on um, estimates that the Community Economic Development Director will uh, acquire. Second. Any discussion? There being none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Excuse me. Okay. All right. And then the next one is the business assistance program. Sure. We've been asked for an update on this. And in the um, initial subcommittee recommendation to the Board of Selectmen, there was a request for $150,000 for uh, business assistance. Um, since that uh, subcommittee uh, release of information been approached by the Chamber of Commerce and by Selectman DeVault, to um, explore the possibility of expanding either that program that was described to me, by me to you, I think, back in March, um, or to um, expand uh, available funding for that. So after discussion with uh, uh, business people, um, put into a focus group by the chamber, with the chamber um, and um, other people, um, What's before you are a proposal for business assistance that is in two separate programs. And I've prepared a little cheat sheet for you that kind of summarizes each program and what the differences are. Uh, the first program that was contemplated was what we call the, the Growth and Recovery Program. Uh, and this was uh, an attempt to specifically address what the Department of Treasury calls affected industries. Those are businesses in travel, tourism, and hospitality. Uh, the, the federal guidance recognizes that certain businesses were particularly impacted by uh, COVID. Um, and so it allows for a greater use of funds to support recovery in those industries. Um, and in the growth and recovery uh, program, it is proposed that we would make funding available to businesses that want to alter or expand their premises um, uh, at coming out of COVID. Um, and their, their necessity to do so or limited ability to do so as a, as a consequence of COVID can really be described in one of two ways. Many businesses, particularly an affected industry like restaurants, have really changed the, the, the mode in which they deliver their services to their customers. Takeout dining became a, a much bigger thing. Takeout became a thing. Um, they had to expand their floor areas, had to expand to outdoor areas, um, often had to change their, their menus, which means changing your kitchen your kitchen and, and the equipment that you use. And this program would provide matching funds uh, to affected industries um, to enable them to modify or expand their premises coming out of COVID. I should say the other way that it affected their ability to make these modifications is that uh, a couple years of balance sheets that show low profit uh, in the environment of rising interest rates makes it harder to actually secure the funds to, to undertake this work. So this would be kind of a long-term program, longer certainly than the other program I would describe to you. It would make matching uh, funds available to businesses in affected industries, and those are described here, um, who wish to uh, effectively modify or alter their um, capital, uh, their, their um, equipment, or their facility. Um, businesses would be required to demonstrate need. They'd be required to demonstrate that they have funding secure and in place and uh, working with a, they would have to be able to demonstrate that the proposed changes make sense from a business standpoint. Um, and so when we're trying to wrap around services that can be provided to a, a prospective user of this program in terms of technical assistance or putting them in touch with um, you know, uh, funding sources like the Section 504C loan that was discussed at the Chamber event, um, a few months ago, uh, sponsored, sponsored in conjunction with the Worcester Business Development Corporation, or with something as, as straightforward as cost estimating to ensure that um, to the highest degree possible, this, this use of, this infusion of public funds, uh, again, I, not more than 49% share, um, is, um, makes sense um, and is a sound use of public funds. And so that's the program that I originally came to you with. Um, I've, I've described, I have a description of that here. It describes the process by which we would intake expressions of interest, go from there, um, how we would disperse funds, um, and uh, things along those lines. Um, the second program 
which is uh, a response to input received after the subcommittee issued its recommendations, is more in line with the COVID resiliency loan program that we had at the beginning of COVID. And this would be direct assistance to businesses that could demonstrate a loss uh, from COVID. Um, eligible businesses would be any business defined by the Department of Treasury as affected. And as you can see on the cheat sheet and in the program application, there's a long list of, of businesses that would qualify, um, much larger than the really the affected industries list. And these would be awards uh, in the range proposed of one to ten thousand um, dollars. A formula to determine award amount still has to be refined. Uh, we can't make 100% of everyone's losses um, good, obviously. So we have to kind of uh, identify how loss is um, described and how, what kind of formula we will use to determine individual awards. Um, but uh, in short, it's, it's very much modeled on, very much similar to what we did back in 2020 when all of this started. Um, the idea is, one idea has been discussed is kind of a two-tier loan program. One, there's a very small loan program available. It's maybe on the amount of $1,000 for businesses that can, maybe didn't save all their seats from their cleaning supplies and, um, you know, plastic guards or, or whatever else they had to do during COVID. And, and we kind of take it on good faith that, uh, and, and make them whole. But if you wanted a larger award, you'd have, we'd, we'd have to, just as we did in 2020, we'd have to have a look in your books, your schedule C, your, your, um, your a profit and loss statement, uh, the customary uh, uh, accounting instruments of business to verify that there was a loss um, and then um, provide assistance accordingly. And in that program, unlike the COVID program, uh, we, would pro we would announce the availability of funds, set a deadline for responses, um, and so that we understand how it can be fair and, and how it can be fair to all businesses in distributing these funds and then make an award. So um, that program would have a very short time frame, in and out. Um, the other program of necessity, because they're much more complex projects, um, I mean, it's going to be four to 19 months to uh, roll that program out. Ideally, we'd have these, these funds, well, we would have these funds committed before December of 24, um, so to be ensured that if, if they weren't going to be used, that they could be returned back and reprogrammed prior to the ARPA deadline. So really effectively, uh, one program is, and it, it's up to you to decide yes to one, no to the other, yes to both, no to both, or yes to, yes to some, but with only this amount of money. Um, I've requested an additional $150,000 for this additional program. That's not in the original spreadsheet, so um, that would have to be taken into account. Uh, but this is kind of a status update on uh, where, the, what the shape of business assistance is contemplated. I, th I think this is great. I think a great job on putting that together. I think that's, uh, it's very encompassing. Um, it can meet the needs of a very uh, wide range of, of businesses. And, and um, I, I, th I think, you know, you did a great job. And uh, thank you. I just have a question. You said originally you'd come for 100, and you were making the recommendation of 150, and this is an additional 150, yes. so 300 total. Yes. Okay. Because you expanded the pro program. Yeah, because yeah. we, we were proposing a different program um, as the result of feedback we got after yeah. we unrolled the, the recommendations in the, the, sub, the preliminary, preliminary recommendations from the subcommittee. Which was the original um, program? The, the growth and recovery. Net or the growth and recovery? The growth and recovery was the original. Original. And I should say, in, in the listening sessions we had about the second program, the growth and recovery got uh, more positive feedback than the oh, other really? one. Oh, really? So I, I, wouldn't, yeah, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't replace. That wouldn't be my recommendation to replace, but it, it would be to supplement at, at, at whatever amount the board uh, deems appropriate. The other thing about this is if we didn't use that amount, we would, it would be returned. In, in six months, that that program should be open and closed mm -hmm. so, very quickly. Phil, I'm sorry. What were the names of the two separate programs? One is the Growth and Recovery Program. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Oh, there's this thing. Yeah. <laughs> I was looking everywhere for this. I was cheating off you. And the other is called, the other is called the Safety Net Program. Okay. Uh, and I think we stole that name from Worcester. I think that's what they call their programs. Well. Okay, so one is the Recovery and Growth Program. The other is the Business Assistance Safety yeah. Net. Safety Net. Safety Net, safety net, safety net safety Program. Net. Okay. Safety Net. 
Okay. And the, the safety net was the one that I know you guys just had the conversation, so I don't know if this is mm -hmm. torture, but um, the safety net program was the one, is, is the new one? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, Mr. Chair, I make a motion that we approve $150,000 out of the uh, COVID relief ARPA fund to put towards the, uh, econo uh, the Director of Economic Development's safety net program. We do this together, sir. Second. Do, do you did wanna, I do that wrong? Do you want to amend and do do, do, do yeah, the bedroom separate? Uh, okay, yeah, yeah. I'll amend it. All right. For some reason, I thought that. Do you want to retract this? Withdraw. Withdraw. Mr. Chair, I make a motion that we uh, allocate out of the COVID relief ARPA fund one hundred fifty thousand dollars for the uh, safety net program and one hundred fifty thousand dollars. Or $150,000 towards the safety net program and $150,000 towards the growth and recovery program. Uh, second. Any discussion or questions? Thanks again. Sure. Um, if that's set, then the next step will be I will contact some people. Are we going to vote? We're going to vote. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> Cash, next Checks step. Right. Yeah, next right. step. Yeah. Rules here. Just as we did, just as we did the resiliency loan program, I'll recruit some people with legal and financial expertise to assist in reviewing these applications. Um, and if there's um, any input from the board that, that suggests I expand that review committee, happy to do so. I think, uh, but part of the confidentiality is actually part of. I think, <coughs> I, a couple questions, though, Phil. The. Um, where are we at in terms of like um, educating the public to these programs and like what do we have in like are we updating the website are we sending out mailers or how 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 was uh do we have kind of like a game plan or a strategy for how we're approaching that? Um, the chamber said they'd help us. We'll put okay. it on, we'll put it on the website. We'll yep. we'll make we'll put it on uh, social media. Our social media reach it now is profoundly greater than it was before Lee started. Uh, we'll get this word out through all the conventional ways. And the deadline for submittal of the application will be at least a month uh, after the announcement. After it time. what? The deadline for submittal of, of applications will be at least a month after the, the announcement of the availability. Funds. Sure. Okay. Give people plenty of time to, I mean, it might even be six weeks. We give people plenty of time to learn about it. Okay. Sounds good. Thank okay. you. Excellent. Thank you. Very good. All right. So the next item on the agenda. Um, is a uh, plaque commemorating service for Constantino Zapantis as SEMA director. Um, Mr. Zapantis had uh, served as a longtime director for, for SEMA and um, over the last year we had modified the structure of the SEMA management and uh, it is now a shared position by the Chief of Police, Brian Coyne, and the Chief of the Fire Department, um, Michael Lutz. And um, to thank Mr. Zapantis, uh, we had a, a plaque created, um, which will be delivered. Uh, so it reads, uh, Constantino P. Zapantis, in appreciation for your many years of dedicated public service assisting the citizens of the town of Clinton, Massachusetts. Uh, Director, Clinton Emergency Management Agency, 2007 to 2021. Uh, as both Chief Coyne and Chief Lutz had uh, shared with the board when they were here presenting was just how, um, how solid of an operation um, SEMA, SEMA was, was, had been run and um, that is a testament to Mr. Zapantis and the, and the volunteers of, of SEMA. Um, so we, we thank Mr. Zapantis and uh, we will be delivering this to him by hand, uh, hopefully tomorrow. So uh, thank you. If I, Absolutely. Mr. Chairman, I, I, I would just also like to echo that I served on the board with Dino as a selector, <coughs> excuse me, and he was always dedicated courteous and, and could, you know, he wouldn't, there wasn't anything he wouldn't do for the, the public of Clinton, so I wish him all the best and he certainly deserves any award that he receives. Congratulations, Dean. Yeah, Mr. Chair, I was uh, uh, 
I, I, my, my term as interim director was, was well celebrated, obviously, but um, <laughs> after Dina retired, it, it fell to the chair, which I didn't know. Um, and so I got to work with these guys um, for a year. Um, it's not a glamorous job, it's not a fun job, um, but these guys just turn up whenever you need them. If you're, you know, there's a water main break, I think it was Mother's Day, my Mother's Day at 3 a.m. I called Mike because I didn't know who anybody was. And they just show up and do their job. Um, they love it. And I have to think that that tone was set by Dino. Um, it's, again, the definition of thankless job. But um, again, when there's a foot of water in your basement, you need somebody and these guys turn out. And so um, I'm glad Dino's feel, feeling better. Um, he was always there for me uh, with every kind of stupid question or show me around. Um, and uh, I really appreciate the council and the, the, the standard he set. And uh, again, we're very lucky to have those guys and to have him um, set that tone and standard for so many years. Um, congratulations. Here, here, here. <laughs> Stole it. <laughs> very good. Uh, thank you. Uh, administrative business. We have a one day wine and malt license. Cruz and Clinton on July 20th, 2003 on Church Street. What's the pleasure of the board? Uh, Mr. Chair, I move that we approve some language here. Uh, one day beer and wine license for Cruz and Clinton for the Clinton Historical Society um, to be held on July 20th, 2023. Second. Any discussion? Yeah, so like. They drink like in, is it like a van that goes around town and you like drink in the van? Or I think it's like a car show. <laughs> oh, it's a car show. I think so. <laughs> oh, okay. Right. This is what Mr. Ngana was this here, is what he was yeah. here. Yeah. to so shut down church. I was just getting ready to go sign up for this thing because sure. it looked like a lot of fun. I'll still come to this one too. But. <laughs> You're not on your own side. <laughs> My car might be deemed a classic soon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, 2012 Mazda, fine. Yeah. All right. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Mm -hmm. And next, we have a one-day beer and wine license for summer concert series. Uh, the Parks and Recreation Department is seeking to include June 13th, 2023 to their one-day beer and wine license approval to use Sterling Street Brewery during the summer concert series in Central Park. So this is, a, this is for the whole summer? This is just adding one day. For next week, Thank you. Um, yeah. add on to what they had already asked Great. for. Great. Uh, Mr. Chair, I move that we approve a one-day beer and line, wine license for the summer concert series for June 13, 2023. I'll second. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Very good. Uh, under old and new business, uh, reserve fund transfer. Uh, so there had been, let's see, so a transfer from the reserve fund would be needed for the select board to fund a consultant to develop an implementation plan if agreed upon with the finance committee, which we have agreed on today. Yes, I think we could table that, Mr. Chair, table. since the discussion tonight would be at the next meeting, kind mm -hmm. of bringing back the scope of services. And, um, and uh, so once we know what that is and get a better idea of an uh, estimate, then we can ask for the transfer. Uh, if it's... You know, if we're not going to be signing a contract until uh, July 1, then we can just get a transfer out of, out of the New Year money. So either way, okay. um, it, you know, it's just, uh, it's just if we thought we were going to go forward tonight, mm -hmm. that we could get the transfer so we could uh, have the contract in place by June 30th. But, um, mm -hmm. but either way, the money is there now or the money is there for July 1. So. Excellent. All right. Uh, we'll table that. Uh, moving on to transfer of duties for Tree Warden. Um, I did have a chance to uh, communicate with Mr. McGowan um, if, about any reservations or concerns he had um, if we were to transfer the tree warden responsibilities from the Department of Public Works to the facilities and grounds department. Um, and he, Mr. McGowan said he did not. Um, I think transferring this position to Mr. Farragher uh, makes sense because it streamlines the process. Right now, he uh, it's his budget that is responsible for any tree work done in town. So now if there's any concerns that any, um, any citizens have in town, they would be contacting him. He would go do the assessment and then make a determination as to where that falls on the list instead of having essentially two departments involved uh, in the process, um, I would. So, oh, the question. Go no, go ahead. That's, 
Yeah, so this is adding to the scope of his job responsibilities mm -hmm. and removing them from the DPW superintendent? Essentially, yes, yeah. Okay, should that be reviewed by human resources? I think I, I, I mean right now <laughs> if he's doing extra work <laughs> well I mean tech right now his he oversees the tree department mm -hmm. as it is so if someone has con if someone contacts the tree warden to make a determination as to whether the tree needs to come down um, I mean essentially Brian is making you know Chris will go out and look at it speaks with Brian and then Brian will bring out an arborist who will come out to determine whether it needs to be trimmed or, or removed. So um, I don't think it's a, necessarily a total change in job responsibility or adding the responsibility, it just streamlines the responsibility. I think we talked about this before. Uh, so we, we put it on as a warn for the town, for town meeting, but after town council, had reviewed it, oh, okay. um, it would not need to be, it would not need uh, a home rule petition. It, right. it, it could be um, just a select board vote. Exactly. Okay. Um, so you're, you're looking or entertaining motion for that now? Yeah, Correct. I, mean, I, don't, I didn't, unless anyone has any reason to be against it, I, I thought the last time we discussed it, I didn't really hear a lot of concerns or reservations about it. So. Um, Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion that we transfer the duties of tree warden from superintendent of public works to the director of facilities and grounds. I'll second. Any discussion? Uh, there being none, all in favor. Aye. 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 All right, uh, next, open space plan committee and appointments. The following three individuals have sent a letter of interest to serve on the open space and recreation plan committee. Um, how, how many? Two. How, Two, two of three, mm -hmm. um, and then this is cl this is now closed. So um, I will. Uh, I'm going to vacate uh, the role of chair. Okay. And I will make uh, a motion to appoint uh, <coughs> Joseph Nataro Jr. Uh, of 90 Chase Street. Um, I will nominate him for, for the appointment. Uh, Mr. Notaro served on the uh, Rocher Farm uh, Committee when the town of Clinton had acquired that property. Um, and I believe his experience during that process and with that property would make him a valuable uh, asset to the Open Space Plan Committee. Uh, so, we, there's only two citizen seats, I guess. Right, you have to, yeah, so you have to pick two. Okay. Um, do you want to, are we going to do these one at a time or is there another one you want to nominate? Um, okay. One at a time. Sure. Second. Uh, motion made and seconded to appoint Joseph Nataro Jr. to the Open Space and Recreation Committee. Any discussion? Hearing none, all's in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Five zero. Would you like the chair back? You want me to stay here? Well, that's fine. That's fine. I, whatever. Does if if does anyone else have a, a motion um, that they'd like to make, if or a nomination that they'd I, like to make? I, I just have a question. I don't. I don't even. I've never even heard um, or the names. To be honest with you, um, did they send in a resume or anything? Or it's in the packet. Yeah. 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 Oh. So. Um, one one was just step. a, a three female, and yeah. Yeah. the uh, other person was uh, at some place. Okay. Uh, so there's one who's in a currently an art list. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll motion I'll to back. appoint Dean Milanazzo to the uh, Open Space Plan Committee as part of the. Citizen appointment. I'll second that. Second. Any discussion? Uh, there being none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, can we? Can I, I was going to say. Can I? I'd like to request that if this other person is interested, um, maybe we can thank him for his interest. Sounds like he's new to Clinton and 
maybe see if there is another opportunity for him to volunteer somewhere else because I'd love yeah. it if new people who have recently moved here to get more involved with local government. So that would be great if, if you wouldn't mind doing that. Yeah, I can do that. That would be great. And I, I would like to, to kind of piggyback on top of that um, with this discussion that's going to follow this. Um, if we could definitely send, you, you know, a letter mm. thanking and then um, whatever you feel is appropriate, that would, that would be great. And then can we send a letter to both nominees as well, letting them know that they have been appointed to it, uh, to the open space plan and then who they should contact going forward, yeah. just so the point. Thank you very much. Um, Thank you to all three individuals for taking the time to express interest uh, in the Open Space Plan Committee. Um, and as select person Perus had mentioned, there are many other opportunities to volunteer if, uh, if, if they wish. Uh, next item on under all the new business, creation of Strand Theater ARPA, fund, uh, ARPA th funding subcommittee. Uh, the select board last meeting discussed establishing a strand theater subcommittee to make recommendations for allocation of ARPA funding. I am open to more feedback. I just, my thought I put into it, I came up with a five member board that would consist of two select board members, one parks and rec member, one finance committee member, and one member of the community. Um, yeah. Uh, go ahead. You want me to repeat it? Uh, it, it was, uh, five it was, member board. It was, two, uh, it was a five member board, uh, two select board members, one member from Parks and Rec, one member from the Finance Committee, and one community member. And that's just a proposed suggestion, open to uh, feedback or change or different ideas. It okay. sounds good to me. If not, would then, there be professional support? Yeah. From what would be my Fill on this committee. Well, I, 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 yeah, I, I see. This is why we have these meetings. <laughs> this is perfect. No, I mean, I always thought like that you would be involved, but like you just wouldn't be on the fine. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, that, that totally. I, 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 I am you? fine with that. So we. So if we have. So then that makes it six. Do we want to have, are we, I, I don't think there's going to be much like um, arguing on this subcommittee. So I don't really mind having an even number, but usually we'd like to have an odd number. So I don't know if we, should we do two community, two community members? Like so that would be a seven member board? Do, do you have any recommendations that <laughs> you, you would? Well, I think that if we were to recruit Come on up to the table so everybody <laughs> at home can hear you. <laughs> I don't even know. I assume you'd be part of it. But. I think if we were to recruit people to the to the committee, I think we'd want to recruit people with, with certain kinds of expertise, right. uh, particularly financing, okay. financial, someone from banking or lending. Um, insofar as we're talking about leveraging these funds, trying to minimize risk, but recognizing the limitations of our own ability to assess risk, I think it would be uh, useful to have somebody with that kind of a background on the committee. I would agree with that. Yeah. I, think it's, yeah, I think it's important to have someone with the financial background, yeah. and someone who's familiar with these types of endeavors. Yes, and, and on that line too, if, because if the evaluation of a business plan might be part of it too, so if there's somebody who has experience yeah. um, in small business or in similar businesses like a performance venue or a restaurant, you know, basically these kinds of businesses that are focused on the consumer, the customer, in the way that those types of businesses especially are. Might also be. Uh, Mr. Chairman, sure. I, I, my, my own personal opinion is I would like to see Phil develop a list and bring it to the Board of Selectmen to, um, to see what his Phil's feelings on, because I think that's, I think it's a necessity we have someone from the banking industry and, and maybe there are other areas that, you know, that you would think of that were people that you would like to see on that committee. Yeah, I think those... those I don't mean individuals, but I mean type people, people who are involved in yeah, types with, of businesses. With, uh, or, an insight and an, expert, an experience that can be special. That's only my suggestion. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't care. That's fine. Hmm. 
You, do you want to? You want to? You want to come up with the? Yeah, I'll have it for you next meeting, I suppose. Yeah. No problem. Yeah. Is there any opposition if 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 Phil was willing to work with Mr. Devault on creating that, or would you? Well, rather? I would just. I, my honest opinion, I'd rather see Phil prefer him to just design that committee for himself and then bring it to the board and have the board look I, at it. I don't have any problem with that, which is one stipulation that I think since this was a select board initiative, that, so I, it, consists oh, yeah. two, that it consists of two select board members. Other than that, I don't care who else is on it. Uh, I mean, I don't, I, you know, this is something that Mr. Devol has been pretty passionate about. I don't see there being any, you know, conflict or, or a, him being a cog in the wheel, at least working with Mr. Duffy, they've been working on. Um, the strand now for the last yeah year and a half. six week yeah well, there you go as, you know well if there's uh, Mr Chairman if there's going to be two select board members I'd like to volunteer to be on the committee I obviously would want to be the other one yeah, well I think well why don't I, I'm just saying why if there's going to be two select yeah. board members why I would like to think that Mr Devall could work with Mr Duffy on yeah. forming that out so, and then. Yes come back to the select board sure. and go from there. And to the point, my initial question was, what was my, what would be my role in all this? Right. Um, but well, that's where I think that. But if I'm baked in as a professional staff, you know, I don't necessarily need to be a voting member. I just wanna, I just wanna ensure that I'm, having been part of this from the beginning, mm -hmm. I'd like to continue to be. Why'd you give me so many dirty looks though? When I didn't have any of the Well, but I think. I didn't give you dirty looks, You know, I mean, ultimately, it, it's that position, it, the purpose of that subcommittee is going to be advisory, yeah. right? It's going to be an advisory committee Ultimately, to the, the select, the select board. board. is going to make the final vote. Yeah, because, so I yeah. don't think that, you know, I unless you foresee there being a situation where that subcommittee is going to take a vote on something, I, I think ultimately it's going to be it's advisory. So right. um, I don't think there really is going to be any voting members, right, necessarily. No, I mean, I mean how, how do you, when the, on the traffic committee, um, you guys vote on stuff, don't? Or the people who are on the traffic committee, right? And on, yeah. But on I, the cable subcommittee, we vote on things, but if, but we just vote as a board to bring it, present it to the select board for ultimate like approval. I don't. As long as as long as there's two select board members, and as long as hopefully I can be one of them if we eventually uh, appoint people, I have full confidence and have give Phil the flexibility and the freedom to put whoever he wants on that on that subcommittee. I, I don't really care. Alrighty. So, I'll, I'll, so, the, so the beginning of this was just having you, you two be able to work together to kind of form the what the committee would look like in terms of positions. Yeah. Phil, Phil, finalize, come back to the select board, sure. and then the appointments can take place after that. Perfect. So, what? I guess so. Well, I mean, so uh, would you be opposed if I sat in on those meetings? Of I mean, they no. me. Okay. No. All right. Welcome. All right. Yeah. I mean, I mean I've, I've always been an advocate of that strand. Mm -hmm. I, I was here when the gentleman came from Marlboro and it had been sitting there forever. So I know how important it is to the community. So I, 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 let me just be whatever. clear. I, I wasn't. So, whatever. That's okay. I'm, I'm just. I don't understand what's happening. I, 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 again, I, there seems to be some sort of like misinterpretation no, of what just. There isn't any misinterpretation. Uh, I'm fine. Let's go forward. There 100 percent was misinterpretation because all I was saying was the formation of the board, the positions that were going to be on there. I was saying, is there any opposition to Mr. Devault being on it? You said yes. No, I didn't. I said if there's going to be you two said, selectmen, I would well, like to be. You had said that Phil should come up with it and bring it back. You preferred Phil to make the choice. Which yes, I don't, you did. But I don't I, care if. Why don't we just? If, if Mary Rose wants to be on the subcommittee, and I do, I don't have any problem with either of us working with Phil. Well, there's no appointments that are going to be taking place today. All I was saying is well, the, the shell of it. That's yeah. all. But apparently, preliminary subcommittee. I mean, I what guess that's what happens when there's no communication. But then there's miscommunication. Why don't yeah, we leave it that I'll come back to yeah, you whatever. with an outline recommendation, not of specific people, but of the kind of skills we should be trying to recruit to this community. Hundred percent of what Perfect. I was saying from the very start. So And we know and two selectmen are thinking. Perfect. Awesome. Hundred percent. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, Phil. Thanks. <laughs> all right. Uh, all right, so let's move on to the annual board and commission appointment process. Um, this was something that was on there that uh, 
So in previous meeting, the select board discussed establishing a process for annual appointments to boards and commissions. Um, in the, I, I'm not sure why this was back on there. Was that there's something that? Yeah, I, I think it's, it's just the, the, I think the board wanted to talk about, all right, we're gonna have a, a time of year, obviously, it's mm. this time that we mm. go out to, to advertise for positions. And kind of wanted to see that there was a letter asking if they want to be on it and uh, a letter of appointment and, you know, and board talked about thanking, you know, people that didn't get appointed and that type of thing. So I just put together a couple of documents just to see if it was kind of the direction you want to go, that we'd send a letter with a form, unless you wanted them to have a resume or they to do a, a request letter, you know, that they, but I, I just had a letter sending out to them ask, saying it's time, your term is expiring to notifying that they're up this year and then having a form that's preloaded with their, their position, their, their, uh, their term, and then they either say yes or no, I want to stay on and then sign it and send it back to us. Or if you wanted them to submit a handwritten letter why they wanted to be reappointed or just a simple checkoff form. And then there was a form that we would then, which um, Joyce was working with the town clerk on having, once they get sworn in, that as part of their appointment letter, they bring to the clerk and then at the bottom, the clerk would then swear them in and then sign and certify that they've been sworn in and we have that as a record uh, and which I didn't have in here but then having a letter uh, that would uh, send out to people that didn't get appointed to thank them for their for, for their service so just kind of wanted to I think I thought the board wanted to kind of formalize yep. the process and and you know documents that are sent out and said what we've done in the past we brought forward uh, a list of who was up this year which I put in the board's packet and then I would just send an email to them saying, do you want to stay on? And they'd say, yes, no, yes, no. And then we'd bring it to the board and advertise and then bring it to the board. So I, I thought the board wanted a little bit kind of more of a formal mm. documents or formal yeah. procedure more than just that. So I, so I think that's a great idea. Put that together. Um, but we certainly would like if the board is ready to go forward to at least to start the advertising process. Yeah. You know, and, and, to look and put it together, you know, on the website and start getting notice out to start recruiting uh, people to, because uh, uh, there are vacancies as you'll see on, on I think almost every mm -hmm. board that we have, there's vacancies on there. So, um, so to at least to start the recruiting and then we can firm up these uh, uh, letters and, and, and renewal form, forms and stuff like that, you can form up at the next meeting if you want. So if, if somebody was interested in returning to that position, they would also submit a letter of interest, correct? Well, that's, well, that's I think that's what I was just putting it for as examples. It would be, mm -hmm. I would send a letter saying, your term is up, yeah. here's a form, sign, check off yes or no, you want to serve, and then sign the form, and then send it back, and then we know you're interested. Or do you want them to, to form, write a formal letter? I would like to be appointed because of these reasons. So do you want like an explanation or, or is that form good enough just for them saying, yeah, I want to stay on? Yeah, I mean, it, it, you know, as far as not comparing apples and oranges, but on, on the school side, any stipend position, it's posted each year and you're required to fill out a letter of interest whether you're returning or not, you know, whether if, if you want to return. So I think, um, that way it gives, you know, to an earlier discussion we had at the beginning of the year when if there's someone who's interested in returning and there's someone who's interested in being considered for the first time, you at least have two letters of interest that you can review versus one person just wants to come back and the other person's interested in jumping in. That's Mr. Chair, just myself, I think it would make sense for even if someone's on the board to when they do reapply to list their qualifications, just for exactly the scenario that Selectman Cole was brought up. If, if someone's on the board and their term is up, but then somebody from the outside or multiple people from the outside are also interested in joining that board, those people are going to list their qualifications and that person would be kind of at a disadvantage because they would have just like checked the box saying that they want to join again. And everyone on here, I'm sure they can dig through their computer and find the letter that they sent three years ago or whatever, just like, you know, put any new qualifications on there. So that would be my recommendation is that, you know, when somebody's term is up, we just kind of treat it as, you know, that 
treat everyone like fresh new coming in to apply again. Certainly someone that served on the board is gonna have a, a, a foot in the door because we're gonna have some familiarity with them. Uh, but we still don't, we still wanna keep it open to new people that come in um, that may or may not be you know, better qualified, who knows, uh, but we wanna leave that open. So yeah, my, I think that we should encourage existing board members who term, whose terms are expiring to when they when they to, to write a letter to reapply and, and kind of list their qualifications for, for that position. So we could so we'll send them the the, if the first letter in the packet telling them that their position is up. Sure. And that if they're still interested then the instructions in the letter would be that they need to submit their own letter. So I was going to yep. include just that simple form where they check off yes and sign. But if you want more than that, then I'll just put in the initial letter saying, please then submit a, uh, a letter of renewal, um, you know, stating your qualifications and reasons for wanting to remain on that board. Yeah, unless the, is the, the form gonna be electronic or, or hard copy, just paper? Well, I was going to do it's well. It's an Excel form, so it would be electronic. That, that would, yeah. we could. So I mean, you could but, just. But it, but it doesn't ask them to list any any background. It's just saying here's your name, address. Make sure everything. Verify the information. Sure. Check yes or no if you want to stay on and yep. sign and date it. That's all. Okay. That's all the form did. But if you if you want more information than that, uh, then we would need to modify that. Yeah, I mean, I was just thinking we could still use the form, just have a block at the bottom of it for people to write the quick, because none of these letters are very long. They're like three or four, five sentences. They're not a lot. So you could just leave a, like a comment section at the bottom for the pe person to like just electronically write in there, you know, save them the hassle of doing the whole letter thing. They can get it all done in one form, I, however they, however however they, they put that data it. in there. Yeah, however yeah. they want yeah. it. As long as they're sending something in by, yep. by the time. Um, Either, either way, I'd be fine with. All right. Do we, do we need to vote to adopt that, or is it just? Yeah, if you could, that would okay. be helpful, just so we know that we're, you know, following the procedure. Sure. That okay. Um, Mr. Chair, I make a motion that we authorize the town administrator to reach out to current um, appointed board members, informing them that their terms are up, and requesting information from them. Of Qualification information if they wish to renew their term. Second. Any discussion? No, there be none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Uh, the next item is the town administrator goals review. Uh, yeah, if I could, Mr. Chair, I know um, you know this past month there's been a lot going on. Uh, what I would just pass out the next the next uh, we've been doing kind of just a goal. Uh, uh, goal review and the next one was economic development and I know I you know, had some things that the economic development office was doing uh, but I had it recently circled back with Mr. Duffy to go over this so it's just kind of a quick draft and there's a lot there because this is a bigger you know, bigger item mm -hmm. so instead of one page I've been handing out Thank you. five pages so I know it's a lot uh, just to give to the board right now so uh, I'd be willing to see if the board wanted to review and we could go over that and then the next one go three and four at the next meeting if that's something that you want to do or if you want to go through this one tonight. I, I think it would, it's just myself, maybe just give us the time in between meetings to digest this and then yeah. at the next meeting we can go through, we can go through three and four. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I mean ultimately the the formal evaluation would um, takes pl take place at after June thirtieth. Yep. Um, yeah, that, I I agree. I think if if the board so chooses, then yeah, let's go that way. Okay, and that um, so after June thirtieth is when um, is now that. That's totally out of that subcommittee's hands anymore, that, that evaluation subcommittee, right? So now it's just, what, the chairman working with human resources to come up with the, the evaluation? Well, yeah, I would think that the human resources can provide, if there's a, an, an instrument that they, that, yeah. you know, can be recommended, but that, yeah. Yeah, and well, ultimately we'll, it's with the board. 
share with human resources what we've used in the past and then if they want to if they have recommendations to it I think we'll be open to it but that but just because I think I was just we did kind of agree that like around in the summertime was an appropriate time to kind of handle that activity so I just want to make sure we're starting to to uh, work towards it that's all yeah very good any other discussion there yeah. all right we'll review that um, Community announcements. Community. All right, so. Um, All right, uh, community announcements. Town election, the annual town election will be held on Monday, June 12th. Polls will open at uh, from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m at the Town Hall Auditor Auditorium. To view a sample ballot, see the Town Clerk's page on the Town website or contact their office with any voting questions. Library laps on Tuesdays. Join the library staff for a stroll, a power walk lap, or a book talk lap. All are welcome. Meet at the library at 5.30 p.m. and do a few circuits around the park together or in small groups. When you are done, you can stay at Central Park and enjoy a summer concert. The program meets all summer except July 4th. Nice. Very good. Any other announcements? No. There will be none. All right. Um, so, um, in closing, I just want to say thank you for, uh, for my first term being uh, on the select board. Um, see what the polls say Monday night, but graciously appreciated of the opportunity. And the next meeting would be Wednesday, June 21st, 2023. Thank you very much. I'll accept the motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you.